Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeti Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 14th of July. Indian Prime Minister Modi attends I2U2 summit. Leaders agree to tackle food and energy crisis. Troops patrol streets as calm returns to Sri Lanka. President Gotabaya lands in Singapore. And Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama says that more people in China are realizing that he is not seeking independence. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday joined leaders of the United States, Israel and the UAE at the first virtual summit of the four-nation grouping I2U2. In his remarks, Modi said under the I2U2 framework, the four countries agreed on increasing joint investments in water, energy, transport, space, health and food security. He said that by mobilizing mutual strength, capital, expertise and markets, they can make important contributions to the global economy. A joint statement said the meeting mainly focused on the food security crisis and clean energy. The UAE will be investing 2 billion US dollars to develop integrated food parks in India, while the grouping will also advance a hybrid renewable energy project in India's Gujarat state. The projects will aim to maximize crop yields and help tackle food insecurity in South Asia and the Middle East. I2U2 framework के तहत हम जल, ऊर्जा, परिवहन, स्पेस, स्वास्थ्य और खाद्य सुरक्षा के छह महत्वपूर्ण क्षेत्रों में joint investment बढ़ाने के लिए सहमत हुए हैं। ये स्पष्ट है कि I2U2 का विजन और एजेंडा प्रोग्रेसिव और प्रैक्टिकल। ए न्यूज़ फ्रॉम श्रीलंका Sri Lankan capital Colombo was calm on Thursday as protesters awaiting the resignation of President Gotabaya Rajpaksa ended occupation of key government buildings while troops patrolled the streets after declaration of state of emergency. The Sri Lankan parliament is expected to elect a new president next week. Gotabaya, who has fled the country, landed in Singapore on Thursday. Sri Lanka's capital Colombo was calm on Thursday as protesters awaiting President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's resignation ended the occupation of key government buildings including his house, while troops patrolled the streets amid declaration of a state of emergency. The president left Gotabaya's residence after shouting slogans supporting the struggle to overthrow his government. Rajpaksa, who fled to the Maldives on Wednesday to escape a popular uprising over his family's role in a crippling economic crisis, was now likely to go to Singapore, reports suggested. His decision on Wednesday to make his ally Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe the acting president triggered more protest, while demonstrators storming parliament and the premier office demanding that he quit too. Now the protesters await whom the parliament will elect as next president on July 20. ये लंगा पाते ने जनादिपति वाले आप इलेवन प्रश्न ये अकन्या है। है बे वो तुम्हारे यहाँ नहीं दिया था रानील लिक्कर मसिंग में लंगा पाप पाते ने लक्ष्य देखा हमारा चंदगत पुत्गले एक गेन नाम में मिलियन विषय देखा कराटा पालने में मुकाबले की नतान दी आप यहाँ न कहमती the government has imposed a curfew in Colombo from noon on Thursday to early morning on Friday in a bid to prevent further unrest. The military said troops were empowered to use force to protect people and public property. Protests against the economic crisis have simmered for months and came to a head last weekend when hundreds of thousands of people took over government buildings in Colombo, blaming the powerful Rajpaksa family and allies for runaway inflation shortages of basic goods and corruption. The International Monetary Fund on Thursday said it had reached a staff-level agreement with Pakistan that would pave the way for disbursement of 1.17 billion US dollars to Pakistan. 
if approved by its executive board. Facing an economic turmoil, Pakistan is in dire need of external funding to shore up its foreign reserves, which are now just above $10 billion. The International Monetary Fund IMF on Thursday said it had reached a staff-level agreement with Pakistan that would pave the way for disbursement of 1.17 billion US dollars if approved by the IMF board and was considering adding funds to the program. In a statement, the IMF said in order to meet higher financing needs, the IMF board will also consider an extension of the extended fund facility until the end of June 2023 and an addition of nearly $1 billion that would bring total access under the program to about $7 billion US dollars. Pakistan is at a challenging economic juncture, Nathan Port, who headed the IMF team, said in a statement. The South Asian nation of 220 million has been facing economic turmoil and is in dire need of external funding to shore up its foreign reserves, now just above $10 billion US dollars. The country's inflation rate hit a 13-year high of 21.3% in June. Earlier this month, the Pakistan government had further removed fuel subsidies and brought petrol prices to record high of nearly Rs 250 to meet IMF targets, facing backlash from public and opposition parties. Several activists and lawmakers of UK Parliament held a meeting recently to discuss human rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan and the deplorable condition of Baloch people. Activists highlighted Pakistan Army has been carrying so-called military operations in the region to muzzle dissenting voices and demanded the international community to intervene. Political activists, experts and lawmakers of the UK Parliament recently held a meeting and discussed the human rights abuses by the Pakistani army in Balochistan and deplorable condition of Baloch people. During the event hosted by bonus Natli Bennett, activists highlighted Pakistan army used in forced disappearances, torture and killing of intellectuals, students and political activists to instill fear and muzzle any dissenting voices in Balochistan. Bennett, later in a tweet, urged international community to take note and expressed concern over the UK's policy has been failing to intervene. This is one of the first times that any meeting has taken place in the British House of Parliament on Balochistan. So it's a very important, significant first step towards engaging more members of the House of Commons and the House of Lords in exposing Pakistan's human rights abuses and war crimes in occupied Pakistan. I hope that out of this meeting, we will be able to engage with more MPs to put pressure on the government. There has been a sharp rise in human rights violation in Balochistan since the launch of the multi-billion China-Pakistan economic corridor. Activists have long raised concern that Balochistan has huge reserves of minerals and gas, but it remains poor because of the exploitive policies of Islamabad. The accused thousands have been internally displaced because of the army operations over the years. Moving on, Human Rights Watch, a New York-based international non-governmental organization in a new video feature, has claimed that the Taliban's ban on secondary education has already cost Afghan girls 300 days of schooling, having terrible repercussions for them, their families and the future of the nation. The Taliban went back on an announcement that all schools would open in March, drawing criticism from Western governments. The Human Rights Watch, an international non-governmental organization, claimed on Wednesday that the Taliban's ban on secondary education has already caused girls in Afghanistan to lose 300 days of their studies with devastating consequences for them, their families and the country's future. Six well-known Afghan women were featured in the video where they spoke about how education transformed their life and the terrible effects the present restriction is having on the Afghan females of this generation. This comes as on Tuesday evening, a press release that appeared to be issued by the Ministry of Education was circulated on social media, inviting media outlets to a press conference on the reopening of all girls' schools. However, the ministry denied this, calling it inaccurate and fake. 
The Taliban went back on the announcement that all schools would open in March, leaving many girls who had turned up at their high schools in tears and drawing criticism from Western governments. The Taliban seized power for a second time in Afghanistan last August as international forces backing a pro-Western government pulled out. Critics say women's rights have since been undermined with new cups on their clothes, movement and education despite earlier Taliban vows to the contrary. Foreign governments have said the Taliban needs to change its course on women's rights before economic sanctions imposed after the seized power can be lifted. Afghanistan is in a deep economic crisis as billions in central bank reserves have been frozen. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama has set forth on a two-day visit to India's northern Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh territories. Dalai Lama, who arrived in Jammu on Thursday, said that most people in China have realized that he is not seeking independence within People's Republic of China and want preservation of meaningful autonomy and independent Buddhist culture. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama on Thursday embarked on a two-day visit to India's northern Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh territories, marking his first official tour outside his base in Dharamshala since COVID-19 pandemic began. The visit comes ahead of the 16th round of COPS commander-level meetings to resolve boundary disputes between India and China, which is expected to start on 17th of July. Upon arrival in Jammu, the Dalai Lama told reporters that more people in China have realized that he is not seeking Tibet's independence within China. Uh, some Chinese hardliner, they consider me splitist and reactionary. So always criticize me. Uh, but now more and more Chinese now realize the Dalai Lama Oh, not seeking independence. Oh, but within China, within people's world of China, oh, it's meaningful autonomy and the Tibetan Buddhist culture. The Tibetan spiritual leader further said that more and more Chinese are showing interest about Tibetan Buddhism. Dalai Lama's trip is likely to irk China as Beijing had recently criticized Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi for extending wishes to the Dalai Lama, who recently celebrated his 87th birthday, stating that India should stop using Tibet-related issues to interfere in China's internal affairs. India's foreign ministry had slammed China's criticism and said that it has been a consistent policy of the government to treat the Dalai Lama as a guest in India. The Dalai Lama was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989. After a rebellion against the Chinese rule in 1959, the spiritual leader had exiled himself to India and has since been living mostly in Himachal Pradesh, Dharamshala. The auspicious month of Savan or monsoon commenced with great religious fervor across India as large number of Hindu devotees visited temples and offered prayers to God of Destruction, Lord Shiva, on Thursday. Hundreds of Hindu devotees across India thronged temples of Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva, to offer special prayers to mark the onset of the auspicious monsoon month of Savan or Shravan, according to the Hindu lunar calendar. Feasts performed Bhasma Arti in Ujjain's Mahakaleshwar temple and offered milk, curd, honey and holy water to the Falu's representation of Lord Shiva. Mondays during this particular month are considered highly significant and auspicious. Devotees observe a special fast on this day and make holy offerings. It was very good for us here. It was the first day of Savan and it was a very divine experience. It was very good. It was very good for everyone. Devotees also flocked to the famous Kashi Vishwanath Temple in India's northern Uttar Pradesh state on the first day of the holy monsoon month. Long queues of people waiting with an assortment of religious offerings like jaw sticks, red vermilion and flowers were seen outside the temple. सर सावन का महीने का लगभग हम लोग हर साल बहुत मतलब उत्सुकता से इंतजार करते हैं आज सावन का पहला सोमवार है हम ओडिशा से बाय रोड चल के इस पहले दिन में यहाँ दर्शन करने के लिए पहुँचे हुए हैं मन में बहुत उत्सुकता है बहुत भव्य माहौल है और लाखों भक्त बाबा का इंतजार कर रहे हैं सब लाइन में लगे हुए हैं 
As per Hindu legends, Lord Shiva had consumed the poison which came out of the churning of the ocean and saved the world during the Savan month. Therefore, his devotees marked the sacred man to pray to him to seek his blessings for good health and fortune and protection from all the dangers. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.